What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Dig, a series dedicated to help you improve profitability on your farm. Come on guys. This is Colin, this is Aaron, and I'm Ellie. Hey, Ellie, we really appreciate you, appreciate you doing this for us. You know, we're, we're kind of dragging here this morning. That's okay, I can tell. Yeah, we're really tired. Let's, Let's dig, dig in. in. Guys, do you need coffee or what's up? Something. Maybe. I don't know That's, what it is. That was Maybe. pathetic. Let's dig in! Aaron, now that we're all jacked up on coffee, mm -hmm. what are we even talking about today? I am glad you asked, my friend. Today we are talking all about new studies in PFR for 2023. Well, why don't you step aside and I'll get us started. Gladly. Over the years in PFR, we have promoted spraying our fungicide in the morning with dew on the leaves at that R1 growth stage. In this study, we're gonna use seven ounces of Veltima fungicide and we're gonna target three different nozzles targeting three different droplet sizes. Those three nozzles are Turbo T Jet induction nozzle with that ultra coarse droplet size. We're gonna do a Turbo Twin Jet nozzle, which is just a coarse droplet size. And then we're gonna go all the way down to our XR nozzle, which is a more of a fine droplet size. This study is exciting to me because, again, we're, we've always promoted spraying in the morning, but if we can extend that fungicide timing and go into the afternoon and still be profitable, that's what makes sense. Ellie, what do you got for us? Well, Colin, not saying yours aren't very exciting, but here's the studies that I'm most excited about for corn. So out in the windy state of Nebraska, we're conducting green snap studies this year. As our Nebraska PFR site gears up for their second PFR season, they're pretty excited. We're looking at the impact of green snap on population, nitrogen timing, and the impact of a growth regulator, herbicide, application on those different hybrids. So diving into a few of those studies, the green snap population study. Here we're looking at two hybrids with different risks of green snapping. We're looking at increments of populations from 24,000 all the way up to 36,000. And then at V10, the PFR boys in Nebraska, they'll come out and with a built wind machine, they'll simulate that green snap event. The wind machine has two buffalo turbine blowers mounted on the front of a haggy. The second green snap study I wanna talk about is looking at nitrogen timing and its impact on green snap. Here we have four hybrids with a range of risk of snapping. So here we're looking at three different treatments. We're doing 190 units UAN, all pre-plan incorporated. We're doing 60 units two by two by two with the planner, followed with 130 units V3. And then finally, all 190 units at V3. Then again at V10, that wind machine is gonna be ran through that study and the impacts of that green snapping will be evaluated. So these green snap studies are pretty exciting because we have the ability to simulate wind, that's kind of hard. It's not something that is done very often. And so we're really excited about this Hagee with those turbines and what we're gonna find from it. Come on, Aaron, it's your turn. The corn study that I'm most excited for this year is our new regenerative ag study. So regenerative ag is a huge topic in agriculture right now. And so I'm really excited for us to dive into this a little bit. Um, it's only gonna be out in Colfax, Iowa this year, but we will have it in Atlanta starting next year. The purpose of this study is really just to look at some regenerative ag practices and how they impact soil health, yield, and also return on investment. So we're gonna start looking at mostly tillage, cover crops, and also minimizing some of our herbicide use as well. So between these four different treatments of control, no-till, no-till plus cover crops, and then no-till cover crops, and then that minimized herbicide usage, we're gonna do those in the exact same areas every single year. And by doing that, we're gonna be able to start building a pretty good data set showing us how we can impact soil health year after year after year when we start looking at no-till cover crops and minimizing herbicide usage as well. The reason that I am so excited about this study is because regenerative agriculture is becoming more and more talked about in the agriculture field. And if we can be on kind of the leading edge here and get some good data to present to farmers and tell them, look, by switching to no-till and cover crops, if we were able to do this to the soil, um, we were able to increase carbon levels this amount. And so I'm just really excited to be able to talk about that here in the next couple years once we get some data. So there's a few corn studies that we are really excited about this year. Colin, why don't you kick us off on soybeans now? As you guys can probably tell, I love sprayers. So we're gonna do a study that's, that's looking at carrier rate by pressure to see if we can lower our carrier rate, but bump up our pressure and get the same benefit. So in this study, we're gonna use five ounces of Lucinto at R3, and we're gonna do two different carrier rates and two different pressures. So those carrier rates are gonna be five gallon to the acre at 35 PSI, and we're gonna do five gallon to the acre at 70 PSI. We're also gonna bump up our carrier rate to 15 gallon 
at 35 PSI and then 15 gallon at 70 PSI. We're gonna see if we can blow that fungicide down in that canopy to really get good coverage in the afternoon. This, this study is exciting to me because really at that R3 growth stage, we, re we really only have a 10 day window. So if we can lower our carrier rates and maybe not have to stop and fill up as much and still get be profitable at that R3 growth stage, that's what I'm most excited about. Now with being labeled, we're very excited to start testing Zywa LFR on soybeans. Very similar to how we've done it on corn. We've seen the early season plant health benefits and protection on corn when applying Zyway, and we hope to see the same for soybeans. Across our locations, we'll be evaluating four different treatments and their effect on yield and profitability. First treatment, we have a control of no fungicide. Then we have a 15.2 ounce rate of Zyway LFR applied dual dribble. We have an eight ounce rate of Revitech at R3. And finally, a 15.2 ounce rate of Zyway LFR applied dual dribble followed with that eight ounce rate of Revitech at R3. So we're really excited about this on soybeans. Like we said, we've seen some good plant protection and plant health benefits on corn. And so we hope to see that on soybeans as well. One bean study that I'm pumped for this year is our starter fertilizer dual dribble study on soybeans. So we get asked quite a bit about starter products on beans. So we're starting to look at that a little bit more in PFR. And specifically with this study, it's gonna be using dual dribble tubes hanging off the back of the planter on our 15 inch planter or 30 inch rows, uh, some of our other sites. And basically looking at adding in some starter fertilizer when we're out there planting our soybeans. So in this study, we're gonna have a couple different treatments. We're gonna have a control of nothing, 30 units UAN, two gallons of thiosol, and then also two gallons of KTS. So those four different treatments, all done through that dual dribble system on the planter. Again, 15 inch rows in Indiana and some other locations we're doing 30 inch rows down in the Delta and over in Illinois in one spot. So really excited to see the results of this. We've done some stuff in the past with two by two by two on soybeans and nitrogen and it's looking pretty promising. So really excited to see the results of this one so we can give you guys some good recommendations on starter fertilizer programs on soybeans hopefully. We hope you guys are as excited as we are for our 2023 PFR studies. Follow along with us on social media for any updates throughout the season. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on another episode of The Dig. Easy things we can be do. We can be do. We can be do. A series dedicated. A series dedicated to help you. A series dedicated to help you. Cheap promote Jack up on Mountain Dew.